What's the most messed up thing you've done only because you were horny? Story 1. Throw away account time! Weird text ahead. This happened in October 2010, I think. Monday night, 10 p.m., I had to work the next morning. I'm at home in my pajamas updating my OkCupid okay profile when some girl sends me an IM. We start talking. She seems pretty cool. I mean, she only has one grainy webcam picture on her profile, but she looks good. We're both the same age, late 20s. We're having a nice chat. She's being super flirty. I am pretty thick when it comes to reading girls' intentions, so this is greatly appreciated. Eventually, I say that we should meet up sometime for coffee or something. She says we should meet up for beer. Tonight. Right now. What? I'm hesitant, it being Monday and all. But hey, doing it. So I agree. I change back into my clothes and walk about 20 minutes to this bar I've never heard of. Her suggestion. Super dingy. I try to calculate my chances of getting shanked. Eventually, she shows up around 11 p.m. She's actually pretty cute. She's half French and has those crazy eyes a lot of francophone girls seem to have. See Melanie Lauren. She didn't bring cash, so I bought her beer. Warning flag number one. She's a little weird, but we have some good conversations. She smokes quite a bit, I don't, and we both drink our fair share. At midnight, bolstered with liquid courage, I suggest we go back to her place. We walk into our apartment, and it's effing filthy. Warning flag number two. She grabs a warm glass of beer off a pile of newspapers. Oh, there it is, she says, and downs it. Warning flag number three. There are a bunch of textbooks everywhere, so I ask her if she's in university. Nope. Turns out she's finally getting her high school equivalency. Number four. We clear a pile of VHS tapes. Number five. Off the couch and start making out. She tastes like warm beer and cigarettes, but is a pretty good kisser. Things start getting heavy. Clothes start coming off. We're both almost naked, and I ask if she has any condoms. She doesn't. But she says that's okay. We can F anyway. Uh, no, no, no. Oui, she says. C'est dangereux. Like, that's a good thing. Number six. I'm starting to realize what I'm getting into, so I do what any sane man would do. I get dressed and walk ten minutes to the nearest 24-hour convenience store and buy a pack of condoms. So I come back to her place and we pick up where we left off, yada yada yada. Eventually, we're starting to bring things to a close and I ask her what I can do to make her She says, that's okay, she can't orgasm when she's on her antidepressants. Okay, we finish up, I stick around to cuddle because I'm a gentleman, and we fall asleep around 3 a.m. I go to work the next day smelling and looking like a homeless man. Doesn't matter, did it. Too long didn't read? Monday one night stand chain smoking French high school dropout on antidepressants. It went okay. That's not so bad at all. Besides the fact that you had to pay for some alcohol and condoms, you got to do it with a pretty cute girl. I had a friend who was so drunk on Valentine's Day, he met up with a 300 pound black girl on Craigslist, did it with her without a condom, and had her sleep over. He had to walk her out in front of his parents the following morning because he still lived at home. You can't yada yada doing it. You yada yada it over the best part. That sounds fine. I was waiting for something bad to happen. You effed a good looking chick without any problems occurring. I mean, you point out all of these warning flags. Warning us of what? A 20 year old going to moderate lengths to have intercourse? I wish I had seen more warning flags like that in my 20s. Jeesh. Story 2. When I was a super horny 14-year-old, I got into the habit of sticking things up my b It all started with curiously sliding a finger up my pooper in the shower once. As men's G-spots are located in the portion of the colon resting on the prostate gland, this felt really, really good to teenager me. I started experimenting with things like hairbrushes, the handles, not the bristle heads, obviously, and old toothbrushes that I would throw away after using. Well, once I got the hang of it, I moved on to wilder things like pocket flashlights and ping pong balls. It was all good fun. Until that night in the bathroom when I decided it would be an adventure to shove cologne bottle caps up my banky tunnel. The first one slid in smoothly. The second one required a little bit more force, and by the time the third one popped in, my boner was raging and I was experiencing horny teenager euphoria. Then, it happened. At first, it was slightly tingling. 
Then it progressed to moderate stinging, until eventually my entire lower intestine was ablaze with guilty pain. The fumes from the cologne caps had started making contact with my internal linings, and it was literally one of the worst pains I had ever felt. I tried forcing the caps out with muscle contractions, much like forcing out a huge poop, but they were wedged in there pretty well. Eventually, I lay on my back in the shower and started punching my lower abdomen with as much force as I could muster, my tears mixing with the shower water flowing over my naked body. The caps shot out like three rounds from a semi-automatic rifle, and I felt instant relief. A slight trickle of blood escaped my rectum and ran down the drain. I was in pain. But I was victorious. To this day, I have never done anything as effed up as that due to libido, and I will never voluntarily stick foreign objects up my sphincter again. Too Long Didn't Read performed cologne bottle cap colonoscopy on myself at the age of 14. R.E.S. tagged as colonoscopy. When I was a kid, I used to shove golf balls and stuff up there. One time I had the pole of the back of a director-style chair up my butt and I filmed it. Forgot to erase it, Mom played back the tape in the camcorder and freaked out. We have never spoken of it since. That crap crazy. Hey fellas, Mainly Facts Guy here. You know, we've had a lot of fun here today, but exploring stuff is no joke. It's a lot of fun to put stuff in your b but do it safely. Find proper lube and toys designed for your special brown-eyed buddy. Maybe even involve a trusted partner. Just don't shove random things inside your b Thanks for joining us on this very special episode. Story 3. When I was 11, I inaccurately hand-painted a Chun-Li Street Fighter G.I. Joe to look nude. Unaware of what to do with my hormonal anxiety, I just stared at it for hours getting a weird little boy boner. One day, I accidentally dry-humped my way to climax while holding her, confused and overcome with guilt, I flushed her down the toilet. This is the best sentence I have ever read. <laughs> oh man, this brings back a horrible memory. When I was about 13, I had no internet on a vacation, so drew myself some porn to spank it to on paint. It was hideous. It was one step up from stick figures. And I even drew a speech balloon coming from the woman that said something like, Oh yeah, baby, give it to me. I somehow fapped to that image on multiple occasions. I'm just impressed it flushed down the toilet and didn't get clogged in there. That could have been awkward. Story 4. Hmm. Butt to mouth, no condom. It was only the once, and afterward, as we lay there sweaty and covered in edible body paint, that he turned to me and said, You're such a filthy bee, and gave me this incredibly sexy, arrogant grin. What a coincidence. I've done bass to mouth and butt to trout. Adorable. I've been there with my wife, but she said, doesn't smell too good. Doesn't taste too good either. It tastes like it smells. Needless to say, as a guy, I still got off. Obligatory Jolly Rancher comment. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 5. Had a foursome in a hot tub with my best friend and two girls we were on the swim team with. And if you're wondering, we were all belligerently sober. That's not messed up, that's just awesome. Yeah, I'm sorry, OP, but I'm agreeing with the commenter. You didn't come here to share something messed up. You just came here to brag about a bunch of athletic people group banging. Ooh, how messed up. How can you possibly live with yourself? Story 6. Jerked to climax while driving 60 miles per hour. It was really intense. No, I would not do it again. I did this once. It was also intense and awesome. Probably would not do it again, not because I fear death, but because I fear post-death shame. If you replace jerk with a word for lady masturbation, I am ashamed to admit I have also done this. I've also thought about masturbating in a tanning booth. Now, I haven't done it yet, but I feel like it makes sense. I mean, it's warm and there's pleasant music. You're naked and you have rubbed the nice-smelling lotion all over your skin. Ye, uh, no, that last comment, Ugh. Story 7. I was about 10 to 12, right in the midst of learning how great masturbation was, and I decided that it would be a great idea to stick my D in a Gatorade bottle. Well, even at that age, my pecker was just too big to fit into the top while it was hard. So, I got this genius idea to go in soft and then get a boner and then have off with it. Well, once I worked myself up to hard, the bottleneck was squeezing the F out of my D, and it effing hurt. It became stuck. 
So here I am running around my house b naked with a bottle stuck onto my D yelling in pain. I finally remembered from old shows where they would take a cold shower to calm down and I ran into the bathroom for a cold shower. I've never felt relief like hearing that bottle thump to the floor. Too long didn't read? Don't stick D in places it can get stuck. Edit. 32 ounce and this is completely true. I think you people grossly underestimate the size of these bottle tops. Or have tiny willies. In that case, I'm sorry to hear that. RES is tagged as impressive girth. Story 8. One Christmas, my dad received a rock and roll Elmo as a joke from my uncle. Toys like that usually end up in a closet somewhere in our house, and this one happened to end up in my room. I was home alone and freshly out of the shower one day and was looking for places or things to stick my D in. After searching for a while, I found the rock and roll Elmo. For those of you unfamiliar with the rock and roll Elmo, he essentially simulates playing a guitar while singing Rub a Dub Dub. He also vibrates. I noticed that there was a perfect p sized pocket between the arm and the guitar. Right away, I laid back, pressed the button, and let Elmo sing to me as he d me off, and I splooged in his face. After a year or so, I was curious where Elmo was. Turns out my mom gave him to charity. Some poor kid is playing with my soaked Elmo somewhere right now, and I feel bad about it every day. Too long didn't read, Elmo had Elmo sing to me while he gave me a hand. Was looking for places or things to stick my D in. Brief compilation of mankind's history. Tickled me, Elmo. <laughs> I was going to do an Elmo impersonation and make a comment, but apparently I am absolutely garbage at doing an Elmo voice. No, I will not include those outtakes here. If you want to hear those outtakes... I require no fewer than 100,000 likes on this video. You have my demands. Story 9. When I was about 14, my libido was a force to be reckoned with, which is weird for a woman, I guess, or at least from what I've heard it is. I lived on a farm and was in one of my heats, so I jumped on my bike and rode it all the way out to a field my dad had an irrigation pipe set up in. At that point in my young life, I had no idea how to and was just looking for any kind of relief. I ended up stripping naked and alternating between shoving my private parts on the freezing pipe and laying on my back spread eagle as the water came around. To this day, I am totally shocked by my reckless behavior. Not only could my dad or mom or brothers stumble onto me, but we lived near a glider porch and had low-fying craft circling our property all the time. Edit. What the F? This is what I get a bunch of karma for? This? Facepalm. Nice to know I wasn't the only one, though. I thought there was something wrong with me back then, and nobody talked about doing it in the private school I went to, so I figured I was just broken. You're wonderful, and I don't judge you. Your life could have gone in so many directions. You could have had a three-way with a glider, or been forced into a loveless marriage with farm equipment. Story 10. Tried to s*** myself, twist my neck, and end up in an emergency. My cousin Walter died like that. Realized I'm not flexible enough to s*** myself, so I did the next most logical thing. Laid on my back, bent so that my feet were over my head, and d***ed it until I came. First and last time I came on my face. I don't see how the ladies can enjoy it. Okay, this story and these comments were a roller coaster, and I want off this ride, please. Story 11. My parents and I slept in the same hotel room, and we split the two queen beds between them and me. I was abruptly woken up when I heard a clunk on the night table. And what was the first thing I saw waking up? My dad is boning my mom. They didn't even notice me awake since everything was dark and only the moonlight was making them noticeable. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was too much to take in that I felt Mr. Sausage, which is my was well awake too. Then one thing led to one another. So there I was off in front of my parents' effing session right next to me pretending I'm still asleep and that these are not my parents I'm looking at. Wait, why? What? Good night, internet. I'm not sure what's worse. <laughs> next to your boring parents or the fact that your boning parents are what got you horny to begin with. I hate this job sometimes. I never get to unread that. Part of me didn't even want to include it in the video, but I had to read about this person having a tug to his folks, so now you have to suffer with me. I need a drink. Story 12. When I was younger, 13-ish, I was sitting in the window seat of a plane and there was a very busty flight attendant. I had pants on, but somehow I was able to 
over my clothes but under a blanket. I never pulled my weenie out for the fear of getting exposed and then blew my load in my pants. My family was sitting next to me. Are you still 13? They knew. Upvote for weenie. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.